All right, guys, welcome back to another Raid Shadow Legends video. Hope everyone is doing well. We're going to be doing the end of the guy slash review on Bellinor now. So I pulled this guy from the double chance event. He kind of looks pretty weird. He has wings for some reason. I don't know why. He's got a crossbow. That makes sense because he's part of the Hiles faction. And he's got that dagger for his overkill ability. So the thing is, but people don't like Bellinor because, I mean, he, he is pretty, he's okay. He's like decent, but for a Void Legendary, uh, he could be better because there are way better, other better Void Legendaries than him. Like for me, I don't have an issue with him. I think he's good. Not the best, obviously, but he is good. So we're going to do we're doing the guide. We're going to go skills, artifacts, masteries, try him out. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So sword leader, he attacks when enemy places a 30% increased crit rate buff and no allies for one turn if the attack is critical. So this is very good for um, if you aren't able to get a lot too much crit rate on your champions like cold hearts to get that 70% crit rate. Uh, he can help you out with that. Insurmountable, this is his best ability. This one scales um, the best with his attack and hits, obviously hits the hardest because it scales better. And not just due to the decreased defense and weaken, it just hits hard. Because I've actually had decreased defense on enemies in arena and he was able to do more damage and overkill. So you, the, what's good about this is that he decreased defense and plays his weekend before he attacks. Uh, which is very good and if he kills an enemy he gets in, he places increased defense on himself for two turns. And overkill, overkill is very good if there's an enemy that has a sliver of HP left and he finishes them off. He will actually heal himself equal to any surplus damage. So that is very good for arena. He also has some synergy with Zavia. He's able to place He's able to place four debuffs. Um, I think only three of them. <laughs> three of them are useful. Uh, poison, decrease attack, and decrease speed. Uh, those are very good for uh, Dragon's Lair. So if you want to run Zavia there. People don't really run Zavia in Arena. So that's not really going to help. And his aura skill is pretty good as well. Increase ally crit rate and all battles by 24%. So again, if you don't have enough crit rate, this should help. But then again, it kind of overlaps with this. And this one gives more. It's basic attack. So try to build them with 100% crit rate or close to it as possible. So for artifacts, I'm running one crit damage set and one cruel set. And for the substats, you want to go for crit damage, crit rate. Uh, those are the primaries and attack percentage. Get those as high as possible. And then accuracy as well. This guy actually does need accuracy to place his decreased defense and weaken, which is kind of vital, vital to his kit. Defense percentage and HP percentage are just bonuses. So if you guys have that on there and as well as speed, I am running one broken set. So we got crit damage 80% here. So the reason why I'm using this because obviously it's 80% crit damage. And I rolled um, crit rate three times, so it is a pretty good piece. And the chest plate, one of the attack percentage primary, we got lots of crit rate and speed, so it's a pretty good piece as well. And we want the speed primary boots. So I want the speed primary because I actually want him to move more often in arena. If I want the attack percentage, he will deal more, dam deal more damage, but most likely he's going to die before he can do that, which is a, which is kind of an issue with my Candrophon right now. So I might switch him out to speed boost as well. So for the accessories. I'm still running this piece, the attack percentage one, just for the substats. HP just for a little bit more durability. Of course, we went with a crit damage primary amulet. I did run a different piece before because I wanted to get his accuracy uh, over 200. So I think now he's at 201 accuracy. So that's why I'm running this piece. And for the banner, I went with accuracy primary. And we got some beast uh, speed right here. So total stats, 27,000 HP which is pretty low, but he somehow manages to survive. Especially if you run somebody like Tomb Lord who's able to place decreased attack and decreased defense on the enemy. So that's gonna, it's gonna reduce the damage that defensive teams are able to do as, as well as attack teams. Attack 3827, that's pretty good. 1704 defense, 176 speed. Uh, that, is, that is okay, could be higher. 92% crit rate, of course it could be 100%, but that's okay. 278% uh, crit damage, that's very good. Uh, resistance, I'm actually surprised I actually, ma I actually managed to get to 111 and 201 debuff accuracy, uh, which is good for all the 20 dungeons. So I'm not I'm not going to review right now because I actually did film this earlier and every time I tried reviewing uh, Bellinor, so we're not going to do a review in this video, my computer will play and play crashes and then my computer starts crashing, which doesn't even happen unless I'm running this. So it must be an issue with play and play. Hopefully it's not my computer. So I want the offensive route and we got down to get Flawless Execution. You can also get Helm Smasher if you're planning to use him in Arena primarily. If you're planning to use him in Clan Boss, you got to get that War Master on him. And you most likely will switch to a Support Tree as well for Clan Boss. So I went through the defensive route. 
so I can get Retribution, which is very good in Arena. And also get Deterrence, so he has a 20% chance to counterattack when in it. He counterattacks an enemy when they apply Stun, Sleep, or Freeze on an ally. So I use this because Torment is, again, he's rampant in Arena. <laughs> so you gotta use that until Plarium nerfs him. So enough talking, let's go and try him out. So I am running Torment. I'll try to run uh, another team without Torment. Okay, so we're gonna try to go out for Madame Three. So the issue with the AI is that he will probably target uh, Skull Crown and she won't die. So we're gonna go after her. And then there seems like there's a bug with him. If it doesn't say resisted, it doesn't show, but he actually did place decrease defense and weaken, but it doesn't even show it. Cause you can tell by the damage and also it doesn't say resisted on the enemy. So that's a glitch or a visual bug. Okay, overkill is not gonna help right now. Let's see his basic attack, 19,000 damage. We also increase our crit rate. Kinda wanna kill Valkyrie. Okay, we're gonna go for overkill now. Cover some health. No, that did not work. <laughs> Man, Dutch is like really, really beast. Also, I've actually switched my Duchess's gear. I switched to artifacts because of Tormund. Uh, he was screwing her over when I was using mortal pieces, so I switched it to something else. So it's different than my in-depth guy slash review on uh, that's just little too. And also, I made her much faster than she was in that video. Okay, we're gonna run without Torment. Uh, we'll throw Tomb Lord in Torment spot. Okay, this team looks really good, so we're gonna take out Torment. Even though this is this is kind of a speed team because we have they have a speed lead, probably the biggest speed lead that there is with. Lord Shazar. They don't have his Terminator booster, but that should be okay. So we're gonna take him out, throw in Tomb Lord. Let's go. Okay, we got decreased defense on Duchess. So the biggest ish <laughs> threat is Duchess Lilithu. So we're gonna try to do this on her. She resisted it, but we still got the kill. So 94,000 damage, that's that's pretty beast. And next we're gonna go after Zargala. Lord Shazar is not an issue if you have block debuffs. So we're gonna keep going after Zargala. And I think he already used his AOE anyways, the place bombs. There we go, Zargal is down. And we're gonna go after Shazar. There we go, one shot. It's pretty squishy, I guess. Yeah, so he is not bad. We're gonna take him to Dragon's Lair with Whisper because he actually plays a decreased defense and weaken, so that's gonna help. And I will actually do a guide on Whisper. I did change her artifacts, so I will do that as well. I, I really like Lenoral here. She does AoE, she has poisons. I like Tomb Lord as well. I like everybody here. I know it will take longer, but we're gonna take a Lenoral out and throw in uh, Whisper. So this is gonna be the team right here. And we're just gonna skip to the dragon to make the video shorter. I don't want it to be too long. All right, so two minutes to reach the dragon. Let's see what we're gonna do now. I wanna get decreased defense and weaken as soon as possible. Okay, we got weaken off. Hopefully Royal Guard can place that decreased defense. There we go. Now Whisper is gonna be good with him. Even though it's not a Whisper guide, I just wanna showcase that he does synergize with her. And I think he's a better option than Rosin in this role because he is a void, so... Um, Oh, there she goes, extra turns. 
Yeah, he is a void champion, so he can't be he can't get weak hits. So as long as he got the accuracy, you should be good. Man, I love I love Royal Guard, he's a beast. And when I said I was gonna compare uh, Ethos and Bellinor, Ethos actually does more damage than Bellinor. I don't think it's even comparable, but Ethos, um, Bellinor has more utility because he's able to place that decrease defense and weaken. Oh, you see all those turns? <laughs> oh, Whisper. <laughs> so Whisper did 1.4 mil, that's crazy. So the damage is pretty low, but he does have utility, so that's why it's good. I mean, not too much utility. I mean, he does do increased crit rate for your allies, uh, which is good for Whisper as well, because she needs a crit. And good for himself, I guess, good for World Guard. And also good for Tomb Lord. Tomb Lord needs that. So you can actually synergize with a lot of um, champions in the game. So he's good for that. Good for, again, decrease defense and weaken. And if you need to use his uh, aura skill, which you probably won't need to. So now we're going to go ahead and throw him a Spider's Den. With a nuke team. So he does not work on auto because he actually does never uses his um, decrease defense and weaken on the Spider Queen. Even if, like when it's on auto, even if you target the spider queen so this is the team we're going to be using two cold hearts one royal guard uh lila two and Bellinor. so i'm going to manual this because it does not work on auto so that is unfortunate hopefully they can fix his ai Okay, so it took us a minute to beat Spider's Den, 20. So he is actually a safer option than Rosin because Rosin has the affinity disadvantage. So that's the only thing. But Rosin is better on auto. Again, I don't really like this team. Mine doesn't, mine's not 100%. But I just want to showcase that he is actually not that good unless they fix his AI for Spider's Den. So for Fire Knight's Castle, he is not that good. Dragon's Lair, he was good. Spider's Den, again, only manual. Ice Golem's Peak, not too good. <laughs> Minotaur's Labyrinth, he's good. Um, all the keeps, he is good. He's a boy champion, so he's able to um, do what he does there. So overall, as a champion, I would actually give Bellinor maybe like a 7 or 8 out of 10. But for a Void Legendary, he'd be much lower, maybe like a 6. And also considering that my Duchess is actually making him shine more. Because she's able to keep him alive in Arena. So that's going to be it for the video guys, if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, make sure you guys drop a like. If you guys are new to the channel and you like what you see, then consider subscribing. I make great Shadow Legends content whenever I can. <laughs> I try to do like four to five videos a week. And as always, thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video.